coming up on Mountain News this morning, a community is mourning the loss of a deputy as they try to piece together what happened. And Governor Bashir is expected to sign an executive order that would ban conversion therapy in Kentucky. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. We're coming up on that six o'clock mark this Wednesday morning. Today is September 18th. Let's send it over to meteorologist Mace Michaels for a look at your forecast. We're looking at some clouds and fog to talk about this morning, Madison, but temperatures are pretty warm for us overall. Readings right now in Moorhead at 66. Notice some of those clouds are hanging out in the sky, but not really any foggy issues here. As you look at hazard though, last check visibility is around a half mile. We do have some low clouds trying to build in. It is a little hazy in spots, uh, temperature into the low 60s. And again, visibility is fluctuating depending on where you are. Hazard and Harlan right now looking at visibilities near a half mile. Wise, you have a low visibility there as well in and around a quarter mile. But most visibilities aren't too bad here as you look to the region up above a mile. That gives you kind of that hazy look. Morning temperatures are warm, though. We are looking at a lot of readings well into the 60s at this hour, mostly cloudy and again, patchy areas of fog. Satellite shows some of those clouds that have been building back through the area. Had a couple of showers, of course, yesterday. Some rain off to our east will try to push into the area later this afternoon. And with the extra humidity in the atmosphere as well, that'll help to fire up some of those storms. High temperatures today, Madison, right around 80. All right, Mace, thank you. There is still a lot of questions surrounding what led up to the violence Monday evening in Southern Kentucky. Deputy Josh Phipps was with the Russell County Sheriff's Department, was shot and killed while searching for a suspect. The shooting happened in Russell Springs about 30 minutes west of Somerset. The suspect was also killed in what police are calling an exchange of gunfire in the Russell Springs trailer park. Phipps was 38. He was with the Sheriff's Department for three years. Last night, a vigil, a vigil remembered the life of Deputy Phipps. It was hosted at a ballpark near the road where shots were fired. Families and first responders gathered to support the Phipps family and each other. Organizers say they wanted to remind the community of its strength. I wanted them to come back and know they're safe and to know they're prayed for and to know that they're loved and they're going to be taken care of. And I wanted us to all join together for our community and know that we're all here for each other. The vigil ended with people thanking and embracing first responders in attendance. And we are hearing from others who knew Deputy Phipps. Flags are half staff at the town square in honor of his service. Circuit Court Clerk Tony Kerr says Deputy Phipps frequently visited the Judicial Center. Sometimes he was there to file court documents, but other times he was visiting his aunt who works in the clerk's office. We're all just so heartbroken over his loss and, and just we're at a loss of words to say. We just know we're going through a lot of emotions and, and feelings now. Kerr says Deputy Phipps epitomized what a law enforcement officer should be. Condolences are pouring in for Joshua Phipps' family after he was killed in the line of duty Sunday. Here's what Senator Rick Girdler had to say. Quote, I am deeply saddened to offer my heartfelt condolences to the family, friends, and colleagues of Sheriff's Deputy Joshua Phipps, who tragically gave his life in the line of duty. I urge everyone to keep Deputy Phipps' family, the Russell County Sheriff's Office, and all law enforcement officers in their thoughts and prayers. The search for Joseph Couch is in a new phase. More than one week after police say he shot five people along I-75 in Laurel County, there is still no sign of him. As a result, officials announced they are shifting the search and allocating Resources to have more of a presence in the community. London Police Assistant Chief Major Bobby Day says they have added extra patrols to schools, daycares, and more. In addition to the, uh, to the schools, we're also uh, doing everything we can to provide extra, extra patrol at daycares, uh, hospitals, residences, businesses. You've got a business, you've got a residence, you want some extra patrol, you can call us. London Police Department, you can call the state police, you can call the sheriff's office. We'd be more than happy to come out and do that. Day says they are still urging people to call in with any tips. 
He says they will still have crews searching the Daniel Boone National Forest, but on a smaller scale. After spending last week and Monday away from school property, students in Laurel County were back in the classroom yesterday. In a post on Facebook, administrators with Laurel County Schools said there would be an increased presence of law enforcement patrolling along the most rural bus routes. The post also said there would be an increased law enforcement patrols during after school events. The Pike County Health Department is working with Bluegrass Care Navigators and others on a program devoted to supporting parents through the unimaginable. Willow's Friends is a program honoring Willow Davis, a five-year-old girl who died in 2023 of sudden unexplained infant death. Her mother, who works at the health department, wanted to use her legacy to create a support system for other families who have been through the same type of loss. The support group meets on the third Tuesday of every month, but is planning a larger get together for its next meeting in October, hosting an event at the city park. There'll be a candle vigil for anyone that wants to join who has um, in the many years past or recent past experienced child loss, whether it's neonatal um, or all the way through to an adult child loss. The vigil is planned for 6 in the evening on October 15th. You can find out more about the support group on our website. Later today, Governor Andy Bashir is expected to sign an executive order to ban conversion therapy in Kentucky. Conversion therapy is counseling that tries to change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity. Pikeville native Kyle May owns a counseling center that specializes in services for LGBTQ plus people and says the ban will offer more protection for the community. I've also been able to hear and see what can happen when People are trying to uh, convert someone from being their true selves. Uh, it can be harmful, and I'm really grateful that Governor Andy Bashir recognizes that and is trying to protect our community and our youth. May says conversion therapy can cause further trauma for patients and goes against the code of ethics for treatment providers. There have been efforts in the legislature to make it illegal statewide in recent years, but nothing has passed. Good morning, watching for some patchy areas of fog in the region this morning. Watch out for your early travels as we look at the camera here around Jenkins. You can see it's kind of hazy, but the fog, at least at this location, uh, right along uh, the highway there, it isn't really too dense, thankfully. Pikeville, though, at the intersection, you can notice that visibility is a little hazier looking. Uh, same type of thing wherever you are in the area this morning. Watch out for some locally dense patches of fog. We've seen that here in Hazard and Harlan. Visibility is fluctuating from a half mile, now as much as two to three miles. So that fluctuating visibility likely again in the area this morning, coupled with the warm temperatures and the humidity, feels a little more like summer this morning rather than approaching the first few days of fall here as we look towards the weekend. Even some moisture off to our east. We saw some showers yesterday. This energy east of us will try to build back at us with a low pressure center around. So. Next 12 hours will feature a little more cloud cover than sun, temperatures near 80, humidity, and a couple of storms firing up. Full seven-day forecast is straight ahead. Mace, thank you, and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. When we return, former President Donald Trump is back on the trail after the latest apparent attempt on his life.